So uh, today, Doug, I wanted to talk to you because uh, I know you're a man that's got about over the years and just had a few questions. Got and about? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get your opinions on some things. Sure. And I think the first one was this morning we had these uh, two ladies that came in and you know, they were talking about sexual harassment and stuff and I yeah. uh, found it really interesting when she said, put your hand up if you would consider yourself a feminist. And I just want to get your view on that, like, mm. what for you is a feminist, and if, and like, are you one? Well, I am in the sense that I think, you know, should two people who are, you know, equally qualified to do a job get paid the same? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, should, yeah, should there be equal opportunities that aren't anything to do with your race or gender? Yeah. So I'm definitely you know I think equal opportunities yeah. really really matters and I think I mean this people go on about how oh, everybody's a snowflake these days woke this blah blah, yeah. blah blah in the 80s there was a point where we had to start discussing things like should you call a fireman a fireman yeah or should you call them a a firefighter yeah right so it ended up becoming firefighter well, I think that's probably good yeah you, you don't have to have the word man in fire yeah right but then we had a conversation about should you call a manhole cover yeah. a person hole cover oh, yeah that was the point where I thought no because you're not even discussing a person there, well are you? it's yeah. a fine line isn't it yeah. I think the thing yeah. is some of the things in the world that are not right you have to kind of over exaggerate it for a bit to get it back right yeah and then you then it's okay again yeah. So, would I call myself a feminist? Yes, I would, but not, but not like I'm yeah. not a flag waving. Like it's not a big deal. It's no. more just like I think everybody should have an equal opportunity in life and be treated properly. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Whatever, with that. Def whatever. Yeah, you know. yeah, definitely. So, uh, for my second question, uh, I know you used to interview a lot of musicians. Mm. And uh, after talking to so many people, I was just wondering, like, who was your favourite one to speak to? It's a, it's a very strange thing when you sit down with somebody like this and you've bought all their records and looked at their pictures and you, you think you know them and then you realise that, that when you're like this, it's just another person. Yeah. And actually, everybody's interesting and everybody's just another person. Yeah. Really. All that stuff that gets put around it, clothes and, you know sexiness and kind of mm. everybody thinks you're brilliant and all that stuff that just pumps everything up it's like a cartoon it's not real so no. when when you actually sit down with somebody what I discovered was that when I asked people who I loved their music what they mm. thought about things it felt like oh yeah that's why I love your music because you think about things like that yeah I thought that was really fascinating I mean I've been lucky to meet most of my favorite musicians I don't know who I'd say is my favorite I mean yeah Peter Hook who's the bass player of Joy Division New Order I've I've interviewed him twice and I ended up doing a two-hour radio show with him on in Manchester yeah or Salford and yeah, that was probably my highlight, really, getting to do a full radio show with yeah. him. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah. So you basically just learned that these musicians, at the end of the day, are all just other humans, really, aren't they? Yeah, but it's a very weird yeah. world, being famous. The trouble with being famous is nobody treats you normally. No. Everybody thinks you're something that you're not. Or I remember, look, did you ever s used to watch EastEnders? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. I was, I was at a bar in Brighton once, and Phil from EastEnders, the bald guy, oh, right. who plays one of the brothers, was at the bar. Yeah. And you look at him and you go, oh, it's Phil from EastEnders. Yeah. Then you think, is my face saying, you're Phil from EastEnders? Yeah. Because he must have that every time somebody ever looks at him. Yeah. He just wants to order a pint. Yeah, or exactly. Bald guy. He's not Phil from EastEnders, is yeah. he? He's the actor who plays that. Yeah. But you can't stop it because you're going, but that's Phil from EastEnders. Yeah. I don't want to ask him for his autograph or talk to him, but no. I can't stop my eyes going, oh, yeah, I think yeah. I know who you are, but I don't. It's like you see him on TV all the time, it's just yeah. like in front of you. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, it's a weird world, media. Yeah, I don't recommend it, it's full of nonsense. 
Yeah, I mean, depends if you're behind the camera or in front of it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, because you could have a really good career in it and enjoy it, but no one know who you are. But that's my preference. I don't think there's that much to enjoy about being famous. Every no. time you go and buy a bag of sugar in the local shop, somebody's going, yeah. oh, are you so-and-so? Before, I think a lot of people would probably want the fame first, they do. and then when it actually oh. comes, it's not what they want. Is no. It? Well, that's what reality TV showed us, didn't it? Like, yeah. Oh, are you that one who got kicked out in Big Brother at the first week? Mm. Yeah, I am, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Imagine that for the whole of the rest of your life. Yeah, it'd, be, it's, yeah, it'd get pretty tiring, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think this brings me on to my next question. And uh, for my uh, FMP that I'm making for college for the end of the year, I'm doing a documentary about love. Mm. And I thought, you know, if I'm making it about something like this, I need to ask somebody a lot older than me mm. for some advice of what I could put in it. Because obviously I'm only 19. Yep. You know, I'm still yet to experience relationships. And I was just wondering if you had any advice of what I could include in it. Well, it depends whether you're asking for a relationship advice or what I think you should put in a piece of media about love and relationships that's well, slightly from different things from what, you've, from what you've gathered about relationships what do you think I should put in my documentary Like, what's like a key feature that you think I can't miss I'll tell you what I think is important about two things about relationships of any sort not yeah. just romantic ones communicate communicate I think that's the hardest thing I think it's the worst thing in the world is feeling lonely with other people or feeling lonely with a partner or feeling like this person doesn't know me they think they know me yeah or feeling like i just want to talk about this but i don't feel like it's all right and then everything gets shut down and bottled up and i think being able to communicate is the most important thing yeah and not making assumptions is really really difficult not making assumptions. and so the only way to not make assumptions is you have to have the courage sometimes to ask I think that's really hard. I think yeah. that's really in every relationship. So if if you're asking for my relationship advice, I haven't really got any because I can't say my relationship history is something that I'd particularly recommend any of my policies on it. Yeah. If you're asking me what I think is interesting about relationships and how to improve them and in relation to your project, yeah. I would ask people to talk about the things that they're scared to talk about. They're scared to talk about, yeah. And if, even if they have to do it anonymously or whatever, yeah. what are some of the things that you're scared to share with your partner or with somebody else that make you feel alone and kind of like shut down? Yeah. And put that on the table and see what that brings out. Because I'm going to include quite a big section on the end about heartbreak. Because like, when I see sort of people, you know, like friends or family when they've broken up with someone, Obviously, it's not me experiencing it, but you know you can feel somebody else's pain, and it just seems like the absolute worst thing in the world. Well, it's just a different type of grieving. Somebody dies, you expect to go through a grieving process. Yeah. When you split up with somebody, you go through a similar process. But the trouble is, we mm. fixate on the bad things in relationships. So we, you know, you could be with somebody for ten years, and the last year is a bit rubbish, and then you split up. Yeah. People go, "Oh, it's a shame it didn't work out." Yeah. But didn't it? Well, you enjoyed nine years of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So we always fixate on the bad things rather than the like. You were you were happy for yeah. most of that time, and then you decided to go exactly. different directions. It's just so easy to get into like that. You said this, or they did that, yeah. or arguing about who gets the sofa, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. life's too short. It is. Yeah. You know, if there's any lesson in the last few years, and so many people dying in the last few years in, lo in lots of horrible ways, is mm. you know. Don't waste your life. Yeah, you've got to put things into perspective. Things that don't matter. Yeah. Make every day count. Cause Live each day like it was your last. Yeah, that's good advice, actually. Yeah. Because I, I can imagine a lot of the problems come when, instead of just like saying, oh, I'm a boy or a girl or whatever you're into, and we just enjoy spending time with each other, we have to put a label on it, don't we? Like, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. And then that just adds this extra layer of pressure. Because then you're feeling like you have to keep something going, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's an agreement. I think that's part of the communication thing, is yeah. to have an agreement. So w when me and my daughter's mum were together, when my daughter was born, yeah, w we I proposed an agreement. After she stopped breastfeeding at about three months, mm. I was like, well, shall I do nights and you make tea? 
yeah. she was like oh yes please and I'm like right I'll, I'll feed our daughter or Mike with a bottle yeah. you make tea mm. I, I don't have a problem with broken sleep I've been a night care assistant a lot some people once they wake up they just can't get back to sleep Yeah. so it wasn't like a big deal but it was a good deal for both of us I'm perfectly capable of making my own tea Yeah. but sometimes it's as simple as that of just going I tell you what if I do this would you do that Yeah. and vice versa and that's that's okay that's just like having an agreement and sometimes yeah. you have to review it after a year or something see if it's still a thing but I think things can be that simple yeah but yeah. if you don't then what happens is resentment builds up and that's that's poisonous that's what yeah. spoils so many things exactly yeah. yeah but I've done all this and you haven't done anything and you don't even notice when I do this and yeah. all that kind of stuff and I don't think I don't think the internet's helping at all because when you think about it, back in the day you went out to the pub or whatever or a bar and you're on a night out and you met somebody in real life and then that was it you sort of found them but now it's like we're constantly being exposed to like seeing other people and stuff mm. and now our brains like it's almost it's reward system it's completely messed it up because it just knows we can have as much as we want of anything do you know what i mean because where yeah. before you just see your girlfriend now you go on instagram you can see hundreds of girls yeah well everything's yeah. an algorithm now yeah, isn't it exactly. dating sites instagram everything everything's just yeah. sussing out what it thinks you want to see or what it wants you to see yeah. to further its own business so it's you, you're in somebody else's business agenda really yeah exactly you yeah. think you've got free you can do whatever you want but it's the frame's been set for you and that's yeah. distortion yeah definitely yeah and then i think for the final question i just wanted to ask with everything going on in the world at the moment like what do you think like the worst thing is like that, that you think the thing that's kind of messing us up as humans killing the each other killing so like war basically just c stop killing each other why do we have to kill each other absolutely stop it yeah that and homelessness just take everybody off th off the streets and stop killing each other yeah. and get on with your lives and stop getting th worked up about something that you don't agree with that you didn't even concern you yeah Leave it alone well, in a way, the war thing, like, it's a bit like the relationships you're just on about, isn't it? Why can't you just sort of, I don't know, sometimes you have to just agree to disagree on stuff and Yeah, well, it on. is. Yeah, you're right. I yeah. mean, it's because people have to be right so often. It's like, yeah. I think this and I think I'm right. And if you don't think that, then you're wrong. And then, you know. Yeah. Like all those wars that were fought about Christian Protestants and Catholics who believe in the same God yeah. killing each other because you don't believe it in the same way. Yeah, I mean that kind it's of insanity. Stupid, is isn't what it? yeah. It's been generations of all that. It's time to get out of it. I think, I think with the homeless thing, like that's really stupid because I think I think people's sort of priorities now they're just upside down, aren't you? you know they'll spend millions on like you know like these high speed rails and all that sort of stuff, and it's like there's people like fellow humans that don't even have anywhere to stay. So why don't we just get the basics sorted out and then move on to all that stuff? Well, I don't think it's an either-or thing, whether we have high-speed trains or sort out I'm just using business. that as an example. But yeah. war, the amount of money we spend on war yeah. puts everything else into the shadow. If we just yeah. stopped doing that, we'd have plenty of money for everything else. Yeah. That's my top tip for the planet. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, thank you for all right. talking to me. Yeah. No worries. Cool. Peace out. I'm guessing we're done.